everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Clicks. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, today I'm going to try <laughs> to get back to my, my series of doing negative space pieces because, you know, I got sidelined because, you know, squirrel <laughs> ended up doing other things. So I'm going to try and get back to them. Oh, because the leaves came along and you know how it is. Um, and you got to go where inspiration takes you always. So I'm going to go and revisit the color scheme. I think it's from 273. I'll throw the link up. It's where I was painting on Convexo canvases. And at the beginning of the video, I was all like, I'm going to color test. And I did a little bloom in the corner. And then I scraped it. And you all were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I know, right? Total goober move. I mean, I got a, um, another nice painting out of it, this guy here. So this is my color inspiration because... I love it so. So I'm going to do that, but before we get started, I'm going to do a quick show and tell on the leaves um, before we do the pour. I'm going to do a 12 by 12, and if the video doesn't run too long, maybe um, do a clock as well because I'm trying to I'm going to start doing functional pieces for the holiday season. Um, but I wanted to show you um, some finished results of those leaves these guys um, and show you what I've discovered for those who were interested in, in seeing like how I ended up finishing them. So let me get the camera down. We'll do that real quick and then we'll paint. Hold on. Okay. So just for those who might not have seen the video where I was painting on wooden leaves, it's these little wood maple leaves. You get them at Target. That's what I just wanted to show one plain because this is what they look like. If you go searching for them in Target, that's where you get them. Um, obviously, I poured on this side, haven't done anything to it, and still need to do a pour on the opposite side. Um, a couple of them I finished um, and did a variety of um, finishes on the edges. So this first one here is one me and my daughter did together, and then it cracked and we filled it in. So I thought it was a good one. We both hate it, so we thought it was a good one uh, for me to test with resin. So I resined the top and I resin the edges. Now the problem with that is you have to get off every little speck of paint. Um, I use a hand sander and this is, this is normally what I do, but obviously I missed the spot. I, it works, it makes the whole thing shiny, but it like, and this is personal opinion, personal preference, it looks plasticky. like. Doing the resin on the bare wood like that, it just made the whole thing look plasticky and I just don't like the look. So I won't be doing that. One of them, um, this one here, hasn't been resin yet because I will resin each side. But this one here is I took, um, oh, what kind of oil is it? Teak oil. I took teak oil and put it on the um, edges here just to brighten up the wood and give it some protection. And here's the one that's unfinished. You can see the difference in color, so it warms up the color. And then you can just leave it plain and not do anything. You know, sand it first to get off any little specks of paint. Um, and I really like that look, so this will get retaped two more times while I resin each side. And I think I'm gonna leave this one bare. Um, and then finally, uh, the easiest thing to do is to simply paint them. So I took one, I usually wait about a month to resin, and this one was like, I don't know, like two and a half weeks, and I did it anyway, so it, it turned out okay. So this one has been resined on this side. That was um, one of the ones I videoed. Um, this is an older pour, my very first one about six weeks ago. And then all I did was um, sand off any bumps, and then I painted it, and I kind of love it because I picked a color, like don't pick a predominant color, pick a secondary color where there's just a little bit of it. So I took the lighter version of the Azo Gold and I painted this Naples Yellow Hue. Um, and that Naples Yellow goes well with the gold on the other side. Um, it needs a second coat, but I plan to resin each side again because I want the dome effect and it's only it looks great with a single layer of resin. And it still looks, more natural than the resin piece to me that looks plasticky. So those were the options um, I went with. Um, I like the natural and the painted the best, honestly. 
So there's that. Let me get set up. Um, I'm painting on a 12 by 12, so I don't have my usual plastic container today. I'm painting in a box so I can spin it. And uh, let's see how that goes. Hold on. Okay, all set up. Sorry about the, uh, the shadow. I might be able to get rid of that later when I fold down the flaps of the box. Um, I cannot spin a 12 by 12 in my plastic container and I have been on the hunt for a plastic container that's about like a 24 inch square by like nine inches deep and it's like I'm asking to win the lottery like if anyone has any leads where I can find a plastic box with those dimensions or something similar maybe a little bit larger I am all ears but this is perfect for today so we'll make do um, I switched back to my Glidden Essentials house paint. I didn't like the Valspar 2000. It really, really thickened up um, on me and we ended up using it to like uh, repaint our bookcases in our living room. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this just didn't go to waste. So uh, this is back to my Glidden Essentials, four cups mixed with a um, giant squirt of GAC 800. So let me put a bunch of this on here this 12 by 12 oh I hate the shadows that's annoying sorry about that I'll just spin this out a little All right. oops good enough and I'm going to try for negative space do this on the corner or off center at least and get a little negative space and really try to blow it all the way out. So let me go right about here. As usual, colors, pouring medium, brands, recipe, everything will come up at the end of the video on one screen so you can screenshot it. All right, got a little puddle there. And I got the same colors and I had them on a cheat sheet so I could remember the order. And gotta grab my cheat sheet. All right. So I started with a, a color art pigment called Ginger Peach. So I'm gonna put ginger down first, like that. Followed by some permanent violet dark. This is just golden fluid acrylic. Followed by, oh, yes, that's right. This is the video where I couldn't pronounce benzimidazolone. And look at me now. It still sounds like some sort of a drug. So there's my benzimidazolone yellow. don't have bronze so I made up another pigment that I can't remember what it's called but it'll come up on the screen so I went with this yellowy color so that's the one different and then did I get all the colors I forgot my red violet didn't I Do a little red violet. Like that. And then I'm using Amsterdam's turquoise green as my cell activator color today in keeping with that other painting. Make sure I got, I got my big hair dryer out today. This is a three to one ratio, it's a little thicker. So when I talk about it making a halo, that's what I mean is the edges of that color get a little fuzzy. Um, it's a little tiny bit fuzzy. Let's see what happens. You know me, I'll scrape it if I hate it. So cool air, medium fan. my 
dryer in it. <laughs> uh, right there. Not too, too bad though. I'm kind of tempted to let this sit and see how much it sells up on its own right here, but I think it's a little bit thick there. Um, yeah, let me throw on my, uh, my headband and give that a puff. I'm sorry I couldn't set up my other camera um, because the box flaps are in the way uh, and I don't have two stands long enough to get in there. I'm having all kinds of technical problems. I'm letting that collect. Excuse the head. There we go. What do we think? Do we leave, leave, let it wait? Or we just go ahead and spin? I'm gonna put my glasses back on. means I gotta spin and put the flap up real quick. <laughs> All right, let's see how coordinated I am. Ready? Does it fly over? It comes really close to flying over. I think it's done spinning off. Well, it's a good thing I left the uh, flaps up. Well, so much for negative space. I have one spot, but oh my gosh, do I love the colors. That is super, super pretty. I don't think I touched this. It's like light and airy and it's got all kinds of colors. Um, I think that little bit of openness actually helps. I'm calling this one done, y'all. I'm just fixing my sides. So let me um, get him out of here and uh, let's do a clock. Yep, I'll be right back. All right, ready for number two. Uh, I forgot to mention that um, I'm using my new uh, untinted house paint that'll come up at the end of the video in the recipe. But um, when I mix it with my Minwax Polycolic, I completely forgot from the last video that it is quite thin, um, which is why I think that first one blew out so easy. And I'm going to switch, I think, next time to triple thick because this is kind of thin. But since it is, I'm gonna roll with it. And what I thought I would do is do this clock. And then I have a like a junk canvas that I thought it'd be fun to like use the Shelly Art recipe, but do a Dutch pour style and take my cell activator and pour it around and blow it out as an experiment since it is so thin today, you know, for science. All right, let's go again. Where's my cheat sheet? Hmm, yeah, let's change up the order. Let's go. So it's just a little piece of painter's tape covering the hole. And then I just take an X-Acto knife and uh, cut it out once the paint's dry. Let's do that. And then the ginger peach. See how thin it is? So if it's gonna be this thin, it might be fun to try the Dutch pour. Where's the red violet? And some yellow. Oh, it's gonna have a lot of yellow. And then like the orange yellow. Oh no, they're different enough. And then the green cell activator. All right, let's see what happens. Get a pretty clock. All right, cool air, medium fan.
Oof. Oh, I don't like those colors. Oh, <laughs> not in that order. Like, <laughs> that my immediate reaction was like, ew. <laughs> Maybe it'll be okay once I um, blow it out. So, but I'm not happy with that. Ew. Uh, let me give it a pop just a little bit in the middle. I like being able to see the aqua though. I do. So I'm going to leave some of it. Yep, that looks good. Just give that 20 seconds or so. Put the glasses back on. All right, let's see what it looks like spun out because I say ew. <laughs> Usually when you spin it out, the colors lighten up. So that's not bad. I'm gonna spin it one more time though. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying I can tell I'm trying to talk myself into it. <laughs> Here's your damn ice. That was my angry ice maker. Ooh, my refrigerator. Every so often it spits out ice and it's like, here's your damn ice. <laughs> ah, I don't know. Do we like this? I just, ugh. Oh no, I can't, I can't, I can't. I know someone out there would like it and be like, oh, it's so pretty etc etc I just I I'm having an adverse reaction to that color combo in that order so I'm going again because ew ew yeah let's go back to let's do let's change up the order let's do red violet first I think I'm going to skip the benzamidazolone yellow. And do... Hmm. In fact, I might just do three colors. I might do that. No, let's put a little... We'll do red and purple. And then we'll do the orangey colors on top of it. And see what that looks like. Oops. I'm gonna drop more I like that color. I hope it's not too hard to see in the box. All right. I'm gonna add a squirt of Floetrol and get this closer to four to one ratio because it does seem quite heavy compared to the other colors. All right, let's try this color combo. to tell with all the colors on there, right? It's going to give another puff. I'm just going to hold my hair back this time. Let that collect a second. I would move it off to the side if there wasn't so much paint on it. Because now I'm like really curious to try this Dutch pour style. Even if it's a, if it's a fail, you know, if 
fun to experiment. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, much better. Much, much better. That's really close to the center, so you'll be able to see some of the um, aqua green. I'm gonna get this one little part all the way to the end. So I'm gonna spin one more time, go the other way. Oh, that was rocky. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, so you got that line to the end. That looks great. I'm gonna put that next to the uh, 12 by 12, and let's try uh, Dutch pour style, just, you know. For the I lied. Right back. I went to take it out of the box and I hated it. So I just scraped it into the middle. And usually when I do this, I like to spin it out and see what I get. I get a hot mess is what I get. Oh wow, it was worth a try. So we'll use that paint. Go again. Alright, wish me luck because this is like, I don't know, take three or something? This clock? How can a clock be this hard today? Alright, here we go. I was really pushing for those lighter colors like I got in the the uh, 12 by 12 which you know I guess is total serendipity because that turned out quick and easy and this guy has been a pain and you know what um, so I thought I would push on that paint a little longer I like the blank center there it's kind of nice let's just give this a gentle spin I'm kind of over this clock I want to get some of the lacing all the way to the edges though. Did that do it? I did it there. Got a little spot right here, like a clump of paint. This is pretty though, I'm happier. Oh, so close. You guys probably can't see it. There's like a clump right here that just need it just it has to come off. Trust me. Did you fly off? Did you fly off? Yes. Ta-da! Love it. That one's great. All right. I'm done. That was it. That was a struggle for a clock. Um, let me clean up my hands to get you guys down. Okay, back for the close-up view as best I can. Uh, the light from that window is getting in the way. This is the 12 by 12. It's it's so, so, so pretty. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm amazed that I actually got a painting um, because I, I think uh, 
my pouring medium was just too thin today. Let me get you down on the cells and the colors. So I definitely need to tweak those some more. So there's that guy. I love the little bit of negative space at the top. I wanted more, but you know how it goes. And then here's the clock. And I'm glad I left the um, hair dryer on it longer. So where the green is, that's pretty close to the middle where the hardware will go. Um, and I like the lighter colors. And that's from pushing out the paint with the hair dryer. Um, that's really pretty. So it's like a two. Let me flip around and say goodbye. All right, that's it for me today. Um, I'm pretty happy with those two, but I think I still have some more work to do on my consistency. I'm really missing the HGTV uh, untinted paint because uh, I never had to worry about consistency. So everything seemed too thin for me today. Um, I have the house all to myself uh, to pour, so I'm gonna let things sit out for a while and dork around with the recipe and try to tweak it and come back and do another video for you guys. Um, but yeah, definitely too thin. Um, this is going to sound awful, but I wouldn't use my recipe. Like, I don't think I'm even going to post it. I'll put a note up on the, uh, when I edit, not to, I'm not even going to list it. I'll list the colors and things like that. But um, yeah, I can't recommend the recipe. Good experiment though, but that was really hard to get a clock. I cut a bunch out that was like um, five tries, honestly. So that's why I was getting grumpy at the end. But anyway, see, I'm like all full disclosure. Uh, thanks for watching and tuning in and um, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Peace out y'all.